Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. Today is day 911 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important to have a proper perspective of today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that you have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the cultures of the authors. In order to help all of us have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's Word, we are investing Wisdom Wednesdays reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. We are broadcasting from our studios in the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. When I was young, I used to love playing in the dirt. Many times it was very evident that I did not hold to the saying that cleanliness was next to godliness. Even today, I love to dig in the soil, to plant trees, and the few vegetables that we grow. There is something about nature and digging into the soil that brings me closer to God. Today's essay explores an interesting topic, which is sanctified dirt. Elisha's healing of Naaman, the leopard, the commander of the army of the king of Syria, is a familiar story to many of us, and it's found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1-27. through 27. Naaman hears that Elisha, the prophet of Israel, can heal him, so he makes a trip to Israel. When the two meet, Elisha tells him rather dismissively, even through a servant, that he needs to dip himself in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman, who was used to ordering his army around, doesn't take well to this and prepares to go home. At the bidding of some of his servants, he consents to dip himself into the Jordan. He is miraculously healed by this simple act after the seventh dip. The display of power, so transparently without sacrifice or incantation, awakens Naaman to the fact that Yahweh of Israel is the true God. Here is where the story usually ends in our sermons and Bible studies. But that results in an omission of a very odd detail about what Naaman has to take back home with him. The core portion of this story is located in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 15-19, through 19. so let me read that portion. The Naaman and his entire army went back to find the man of God. They stood before him, and Naaman said, Now I know there is no other God in all of the world except in Israel, so please accept a gift from your servant. But Elijah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept any gifts. And though Naaman urged him to take the gifts, Elijah refused. The Naaman said, All right, but please allow me to load two of my mules with earth from this place, and I will take it back home with me. From now on I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other god except the Lord. However, may my Lord pardon me for this one thing. When my master the king goes to the temple, to the god of Ramon, to worship there, he leans on my arm. May the Lord pardon me when I bow too. Go in peace, Elisha said. So Naaman started home again. As we see in this passage, the elated Naaman returns to Elisha and begs him to take payment for his healing. Elisha repeatedly refuses. Finally, before embarking for Syria, Naaman asks a strange request, to load two mules with dirt to take back with them. Dirt? I can think of a few favors I would like to ask a prophet in a receptive mood, but dirt certainly isn't one of them. This request is so odd that it's hard to avoid wondering if Naaman did some kind of therapy. Why would he ask for dirt? But Naaman was completely in his right mind. His request is found in verse 17 when we read, From now on I will never again offer burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other god except the Lord. The dirt and Naaman's new allegiance to the God of Israel are related. Naaman was a man with significant duties in his home country. He just couldn't stay in Israel, but he could take part of Israel back with him. But why would he want to? Naaman's unusual request stems from the ancient and biblical conception that the earth is a locale of a cosmic turf war. Naaman wanted the dirt from Israel because Israel was Yahweh's territory. The dirt which is Yahweh's domain is holy ground. The idea of holy ground is an important element in Israelite theology. This phrase is used when Moses is in the presence of the angel of the Lord, the God of Israel, at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 through 5, and it is also found when Joshua meets the angel of the Lord in Joshua chapter 5 verse 15. More broadly, the idea derives from Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 8 and 9, and is compared to Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 19 through 20. 
and that is where we learn that God divided up the nations at the Tower of Babel, and they were allotted to the sons of God. The nations of the world were, in effect, disinherited by Yahweh as his own earthly family. Immediately after the Tower of Babel story, Yahweh called Abraham, and the nation of Israel was created through him. Israel was, therefore, Yahweh's portion. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 9 whereas all the other nations belonged to the sons of God whom Israel was forbidden to worship. As a result, Israel was holy ground. The territory of every other nation was not. The rest of the Old Testament is the story of God's intention to reclaim every nation on the earth. Elisha understood Naaman's request and granted it without hesitation. He knew the request came from a sincere theological change of heart. Naaman believed and proclaimed in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 15, Now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Naaman wanted to return to his homeland with holy ground. Even though he would still have to help his aged king bow before Ramon, Naaman wanted Elisha to know his heart really belonged to the God of Israel. Well, that's a wrap for our essay for today. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue with the Old Testament as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, 1003 BC, The Senses. I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer, which will help you to lighten up and live that rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 910 treks or read the wisdom journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.